A shocking revelation turns a teenage boy's world upside down in this chilling look at the evil that can lurk below even the most wholesome surface. Welcome back to Movies Explained, today's film is a crime drama mystery from 2018 titled The Clove Hitch Killer. The film opens with a grieving ceremony in the small township of Clarksville, Kentucky. The residents of the town gather to remember the victims of the infamous Clove Hitch Killer that terrorized the town 10 years ago. The killer is recognized by his signature clove hitch knot, with which he binds and tortures his victims, all of them middle-aged females. After taking 13 lives, the killer disappeared. The Burnside family is an average suburban family and devout Christians, Don is a community leader and the leader of the local Boy Scout troop. After a scout gathering, Don informs his son Tyler that work has been slow and he won't be able to send Tyler to leadership camp. Tyler is upset because the trip is supposed to look good on his college application but eventually understands. Don tries to cheer up Tyler by horse playing and makes him say uncle before releasing him from his grip. Tyler sneaks out of his room late at night after receiving a text from his girlfriend Amy and drives his father's truck to meet her. Tyler and Amy kiss nervously, but before they can continue their romance, Amy discovers a magazine cutting of a ball gagged woman from under the seat. Tyler is surprised to see it and informs her that it's not his. Her opinion of Tyler changes and she wants to go home. In the morning, after a quick breakfast, they head out to pick up Uncle Rudy, who's handicapped and unable to move or speak, before heading to church. After church services, Tyler's strange friend Billy notices a girl sitting in the parking lot and tells Tyler that he knows her from school and that she writes the same report about the murders every year. Billy tells Tyler that they should pray for her and call the police because she might be planning a church shooting, which makes Tyler laugh. Later, while the family is cutting coupons and listening to Christian radio, Billy texts Tyler and asks if it's true, calling him a perv. Tyler confronts Amy about the rumors she started and tries to persuade her that the picture in the car was not his. But she walks away so no one can see her talking to him. Tyler breaks into his father's shed the next day and begins going through his belongings, discovering bondage porn magazines and a Polaroid picture of a gagged and tied up woman with the words Nora, Lucky's favorite, written on it. Suspecting that his father is the clove hitch killer, he looks up the woman's name and discovers that she was one of the serial killer's 13 victims. The following day, remembering Cassie, the girl that was into the clove hitch killings, Tyler decides to go find her and ask some questions. Cassie writes down her address and invites him to come over at 3 p.m. with some cookies. Tyler arrives on time, and Cassie pulls out a box containing everything she has gathered about the killings, showing Tyler each case one by one and telling him that she does not believe the killer has stopped, that she has been studying the evidence and following the FBI playbook, and that she will continue searching for clues in the hopes of one day finding the killer. During family game night, Tyler tells his parents that he wants to volunteer for tutoring. In reality, it's so he can spend more time with Cassie. He starts going over to Cassie's house, where the two of them go over the old case files on the murders. Don becomes suspicious of Tyler and follows him to Cassie's house. When Tyler returns, he confronts Tyler and asks if he's seeing a girl. Tyler is relieved and confirms Don's incorrect suspicions. But by doing so, he creates a new problem. Don now demands that he bring his girlfriend home so they can meet her. Tyler tells Cassie everything and she agrees to play along. After dinner, Cassie realizes Tyler has been obsessed with the Clovehitch murders because he suspects his father is the killer. She confronts Tyler about it, and Tyler tells her about the picture of Nora, that he believes is Nora Devlin, one of the victims, and the writing next to her name that says Lucky's favorite. However, Cassie begins to ridicule him, telling him that he is insane for believing that someone as exemplary as his father could be a serial killer just because he likes weird porn. Late at night, Cassie returns to Tyler's house, she wakes him up by throwing stones at his window. She tells Tyler that what he said about Lucky's favorite, stayed in her head and when she looked through her files, she noticed that victim number 5 received a note in her mailbox that mentioned Lucky. After hearing this, they sneak into Don's shed and open his stash box to find that the magazines and picture has been removed, Cassie sticks her hand in the hole and finds a paper that looks like a blueprint for something very evil. Tyler looks closely and notices that it matches the layout of the house. Cassie agrees to meet him tomorrow and rushes out before his family wakes up. Before going back to bed, Tyler crawls under the house to investigate and finds a secret underground room. He finds a box that is filled with disturbing bondage paraphernalia, among them a collection of ID cards. Tyler looks through them and is traumatized when he sees Nora Devlin's ID card. The following morning, Don takes Tyler camping in the woods to have some father and son time. While there, Don asks Tyler if he's told anyone. When Tyler inquires to what Don's talking about, Don informs Tyler that he knows he's been in the shed and in the crawl space. He tells Tyler that what he found is not his, but his brother Rudy's. Tyler being an innocent naive teenager, believes his father. Don goes on to say that years ago he found Rudy's stash in his apartment and told Rudy that he needs to turn himself in, 
and that's when he tried to kill himself. Tyler replies that he thought it was a car crash. Don tells him that it was, he drove off the road trying to kill himself. He tells Tyler that he kept everything because the victim's families had a right to know the truth. But it was never the right time to do so. Tyler wants him to either take it to the police or burn it, and Don agrees to burn it. The following day, Tyler meets with Cassie and explains to her that it was his uncle Rudy behind the murders, that he tried to commit suicide and that's why he's a vegetable in a wheelchair now. Tyler wants Cassie to stop pursuing the clove hitch killer because it's useless and it's only going to put their family under a negative spotlight. Hearing everything, Cassie confesses that one of the clove hitch victims was her mother. When Tyler hears her name he informs Cassie about the ID cards he saw and that hers was one of them. He goes on to tell Cassie that they burned everything since it didn't matter anymore. Cassie is very emotional, she asks Tyler whether he believes everything and has no doubt that Don's telling the truth, but Tyler is unable to answer. Later, Don has agreed to pay for the leadership camp Tyler has been eager about going. Don puts Tyler in a bus while sending Cindy to her mother's house for a few days with his daughter Susie. Tyler gets off the bus and meets up with Cassie and the pair decide to follow Don. They notice Don following a woman from the supermarket. Later on Tyler sneaks into his house to download a GPS app in Don's phone so they can follow him. While inside Don comes in dressed as a woman, Tyler takes cover under the bed and texts Cassie for help. She comes ringing the doorbell, allowing Tyler to escape. Later, as they follow Don with the GPS app, they come to a house and notice a clove hitch not tied on the house and as Cassie looks through the window she learns that this is the house of the woman from the supermarket. Tyler decides to confront Don about everything and goes to the house, but he finds that Don is not there, he left his house and didn't take his phone. Cassie notices rope fibers on the bed and they rush to the lady's house from the supermarket. Inside the house they hear screaming, Tyler heads to the bedroom with his rifle pointed and finds Don and the lady tied up on the ground. Cassie rushes in and removes the plastic bag covering her face. Don tries telling Tyler that they're having an affair and that what he's seeing is nothing but role-playing. Cassie tries to grab Don's gun from the dresser but Don slams her to the wall knocking her out. He tells Tyler that she doesn't know gun safety and he doesn't trust her with a firearm. Don convinces Tyler to lower his firearm and hand him the rifle. As Tyler hands him the rifle, Don tells him that he's not mad, just disappointed and pulls the trigger, but the gun's not loaded and Tyler stands there in shock seeing his own father just tried to kill him. Tyler rushes him and the two begin wrestling. Don throws Tyler to the ground and chokes him until Cassie wakes up and knocks him out with a lamp. Cassie takes out her phone to call the police and Tyler stops her. They take Don to the woods and put up a camping tent to make it look like he was out camping. Tyler shoots him and makes it look like he committed suicide. Later, Cindy talks to Tyler to explain what happened to his father. She tells Tyler that the police don't think that he was killed, they believe it was suicide. Cindy breaks down crying and Tyler who is the man of the house now comforts her. At his father's wake, Tyler gives a long eulogy as Cassie watches from outside. At the end, he tells his father that he loves him. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.